Thank you. Thank you for hanging around here. I know you're probably itching to get in your car and get back. I appreciate you staying. You guys are the ones and gals are the ones that want to leave with a smile on your face and a little bit of laughter, and I appreciate that very, very much. Coming all the way from Texas and I have to go back. I'm he headed over to the airport in Indianapolis. Hopefully we can get out. If not, I'll stay the night, enjoy another night here in the wonderful, wonderful area and the wonderful state of Indiana. Well, listen, this has been great. I want you to give uh, First Farmers a round of applause. This has been a great thing. Yesterday and today have been great. They do this because they believe in you and they want you to do your job better. And I just think it's awesome that they do this. I wish we'd had stuff like this back when we were growing up. And when I was on the farm, my dad and my, my uh, aunt, his sister, divided uh, and have not talked for the last 40 years. In fact, she passed away last year. And they hadn't talked for 40 years because what Polly talked about. There was not a will. Uh, my granddad just kind of did it on the whim. And they had a big argument between land and a cabin in, uh, in New Mexico. And I wish we had gotten what you guys had gotten today. Uh, would have made it a whole lot simpler. And uh, hopefully they would have talked. But uh, anyway, good stuff. And I know you guys are going to uh, appreciate it and stuff. Well, listen, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I am from the great state of Texas. I have to brag on my state just a little bit. We are a big state. You want to know how big? Well, I spoke in Connecticut last year, and I didn't want them to feel real bad, but I said, your state fits in my state 48 times. That's how big we are. We're a big state. That's why when we look at the United States, this is how we see it. <laughs> I know we're a little prideful, and I apologize for that, but that's just the way we are as Texans. You know, when you meet a Texan, we always have tall tales, and people always ask me, is this true about Texas? And I'm always telling them yes. I don't care what they ask me. It's all true. This is the way we do limousines in Texas. It's just all true. In fact, I was on a farm, and this farmer had a brand new Segway. You know that little two-wheeled thing you know you drive? This was his. And I said, yes, it is the size of Texas. It's huge. People come up to me, and they go, is it true? And I'm like, yes. I just want to keep the tall tales going. You know what I mean? Now, how many of y'all ever been to Dallas-Fort Worth? How many driven there? Okay, you know that we all we don't wave with all our fingers, and I apologize for that. <laughs> but if you come back, we just finished about 10 miles of highway on the uh, north side of Dallas. It's kind of the loop that goes around 635 is what they call it, Highway 635. They just spent one billion dollars with a B, one billion, uh, 10 miles of highway. Okay, you got to come and try it. It's an absolute blast. <laughs> blast. Now, what's funny is I do, I, I do this all over the country. This little lady came up to me. She said, is that true? And I'm like, yes. And you got to get your speed up because you don't want to be on top without enough speed. <laughs> anyway, so there's a lot of tall tales about Texas, and I just love to keep them going, all right? So whatever you hear, yes, it's true. It's all true. Well, listen, I grew up on a farm up in the Panhandle, almost in Oklahoma. It was five miles south of Oklahoma and 35 miles west of Oklahoma, tucked up there in the Panhandle. We had about 1,500 acres. We did wheat, barley, alfalfa, and about 50 to 75 head of cattle. And it was, it was the greatest time of my life. I, I, in fact, I, I wish I could have stayed, but the Lord had called me in the ministry at an early or young age, teenage years, and I, I did that, I fulfilled that call. But I love the farm, I love the farm life, and I tell people you can leave the farm, but the farm never leaves you. It just never does. And I, tell, and I speak to corporate America and I tell them, you miss something not being raised on a farm. Because everything I learned, I learned on the farm. Everything. In fact, I learned it from my parents. This is my beautiful mom. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> I'm in therapy because of her. <laughs> Not because she was a bad mom, y'all, but look, because she dressed me like her and my sister wherever we went. Anybody had that growing up? Oh, yes. Yeah, you're not going to admit it. I know, I know. But here I am sitting on our bar in our, in our, uh, our uh, farmhouse, and I speak to a lot of young crowds. Now, you guys are going to know this, but some of my younger crowds don't know this, but that is a telephone. <laughs> now, how many of y'all remember party lines? Oh, yeah. See, I have to explain that to a lot of crowds, especially corporate crowds. are like, what? I'm like, yeah, you couldn't use the phone if your neighbor was on it because you shared it with all the neighbors in the area. But you know what we would do, don't you? We'd sit there, we'd have our hand over, and we'd listen. Isn't that right? And then somebody would say on the other line, somebody's listening, we'd go click. That's what we did. That's exactly what we did. We had all the animals and things like that, and I started showing uh, farm our animals in 4-H. That was my first lamb I did in 4-H, and then went through FFA and had uh, uh, pigs and, and lambs and things like that. Loved everything about it. But my favorite part of the farm, 
Okay, this is it right here. The swimming hole or pool or whatever you want to call it back then. This is my favorite. This is where we would, in the summer, after um, all the hard work and things like that, we would just go and swim. This is also known as the cow's toilet. You know that, don't you? The cows would wonder, see them out there? They wonder in their poop and pee, and we swam in it. People go, you actually swam in that? I'm like, yes. In fact, that's my sister, that's her friend, and I'm under the water. <laughs> Seriously, swimming. They go, did you swallow it? And I'm like, yes. You couldn't help but swallow it. Get up your nose and in your mouth. But listen, this is the, th this is the most awesome thing about the farm life. How many believe God can take a negative and turn it into a positive? Absolutely he can. Listen, I was born in 1965. You do the math. I turned 50 last year. Did you know when my parents brought me home from the hospital in 1965? To this day, even standing right here before you, I've never been in the hospital since I got home. You know why? <laughs> that cesspool right there. <laughs> One swallow of that, my antibodies are like Superman. I get sick and they're like, been there, done that? Get out of here. I just don't get sick. I've never been to the hospital. And I just owe it all of my farm life, growing up on the farm and stuff like this. Now, here's where my first job was. It was at the, well, besides the farm. Okay, I was, started working when I was about four years old. I drove my dad's pickup when he, he would put the, the, the throttle on, idle it. I'd sit on my knees or a box, and I'd drive the pickup while he got in the back and threw the hay out. And all he said, he said, when you get to the edge, don't go off the edge of the cliff. That was my job. So I started young and worked on the farm, but this was my first paying job that my dad allowed me to take when I was 14, and I was dumping the wheat trucks uh, uh, and I would fill up the 18-wheelers and the rail cars. But do you know what my greatest accomplishment here is? Peeing off the top of that. <laughs> Seriously, three of my, or two of my classmates, we worked together, and we'd get, see how close we'd get to the edge of that and pee off the top. It's a wonder we lived, you know? I mean, it's a wonder. You know, that's a high up there. But I learned a lot. You know what I learned? Updraft. <laughs> that was a killer reality that day, I'm telling you. Wow. I also learned this on the farm. You never, ever pee on a fence. <laughs> I learned it twice because <laughs> I'm a slow learner, <laughs> slow learner. <laughs> but I loved working there as well. I loved the farm life. I loved everything about uh, all of that. And here's what my dad taught me because I watched my dad, and I watched him go through the perils of agriculture and farm life and the ups and downs. I'd see... I didn't understand it fully, but I knew the stresses because I'd watch them, you know, and, and I didn't understand the financial part where they'd go borrow the money and they'd have to, you know, we'd have to have a good enough crop to pay back the bank if we didn't have to borrow more money and hoping it would all work and we had great years and we had not so great years. And then when we had great years, maybe the tractor broke down, the swather broke down, the combine. I mean, it was just up and down and you know that life and I watched my dad and the stresses of it. But my dad taught me how to handle the stresses of it. You know how he taught me? The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. <laughs> How many of y'all remember The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson? Yeah, I think it was the best Tonight Show there ever was, uh, although Fallon does a pretty good job nowadays. But my dad, here's what he taught me. He would, in fact, in the summer, he'd plow into the evening until about 10 o'clock at night. He'd come in, he'd eat dinner, whatever's left over, and then he would sit in front of the TV and he would just laugh at the Johnny Carson Show for the next 30 to 40 minutes. And I would just watch all that stress that he would go through just fall off of him because he taught me how to laugh. He taught me how to, how to handle the stress in life. Then he'd fall asleep till about midnight. He'd get back up and go out and plow another three or four hours because it was cool, cooler in the, day, in the night than it was during the day. We didn't have the fancy tractor. We didn't have the cabs on the tractors. We had the old open tractor cabs. In fact, we didn't have anything but, how many of y'all remember the old headphones that you wore? It was like this big, and all you could pick up was AM. AM. You couldn't even have an FM. And the only way you could pick up AM is turn your head like this and drive like this. <laughs> Get down to the road, turn around on the road, and turn it back like this. That's all we had. And so my dad taught me how to handle that by watching The Tonight Show and just laughing. Not just that, but my dad, he's 81 now. And I, he's been through heart surgery. He's been through all kinds of issues. He's now got, uh, 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 oh, he can't breathe very well. I can't remember the name of that. COPD, thank you very much. But here's the thing. I believe he's made it this far because he's learned how to laugh. I really do. 
He loved to tell a story. In fact, a lot of my stories that I grew up telling are because of my dad. He'd hear a great story. In fact, he, he learned texting a couple of years ago. Oh my gosh, my dad learned texting. So he texts me all the time. And he'll text me his new joke, and I'm like, Dad, I can't use that joke. <laughs> it's a good joke, but I can't use it in my audiences. But he still is, even to this day, laughing. And he would watch The Tonight Show, and he noticed something on The Tonight Show. How many of y'all remember The Tonight Show in that there were a lot of magicians on there? Do y'all remember that? Here's the reason why we found out. Johnny was a magician. He, in fact, he grew up doing card tricks and coin tricks, and that's him as a teenager and then young adult. As a young adult, that's what he did as a career, and he went by the stage name The Great Carsoni. So when he made it big and took over The Tonight Show, he made sure that he would showcase magicians, and here's how he would do it. His talent uh, gr group would go out through the United States, find magicians, and then when they would fly them to Burbank, and here's what they do. They would actually audition for Johnny, and this is one of the magicians uh, auditioning for Johnny in his house there in Malibu. And if Johnny liked him, he'd put him on The Tonight Show. And usually what they would do is they'd get a table out there in the middle of the stage. Johnny would get on one side and the guest on, a, on the other, and the magician would just magish. And Johnny loved it, absolutely loved it. And my dad, he would watch that, and he says, son, come here and watch that. He let me stay up when the magician was on there. He said, you need to learn how to do this. And the reason being, he knew I was going to be a public speaker because my grandmother, his mother, who was an English teacher, superintendent, I mean, when you're from a small town, I graduated fifth in my class out of eight. <laughs> Tell you everything where I grew up. But she was, the super, she was the English teacher first, then the coach, then the principal, and then the superintendent. And she did it all. But she was wonderful about grooming people to be public speakers. And she took several kids to state and things like that. So when I came along, she saw me as maybe a potential and started doing all of that. And so my dad said, you need to learn a magic trick because that would probably come in handy in your public speaking. And so I thought, well, Dad, i got to buy the tricks. And he goes, I can't afford the tricks. Do it with stuff around the house. So that was my challenge is to do magic with stuff around the house. So here's the very first trick I learned as a nine-year-old boy with this silver dollar. Now, it was brand new in 1974. It's a 74 silver dollar. It was brand new in 1974, and this is how I acquired it. My bus driver, Cleta McNeil, who picked me up every morning on the farm, took me to school, and brought me back home in the afternoon, one Christmas, 1974, gave all of us on the bus, that rode her bus, a silver dollar. People go, what? She must have been rich. There were only six of us on the bus. Because <laughs> I'm from a small town, remember that. So here's the very first trick I learned. Nine-year-old boy, this is what I learned. Dan, you're going to be great. Let me borrow your hand right there, okay? No, the clean one. Yeah, that would be that one, all right? Here's what we're going to do. Close it real tight, just like that. Hold it up high. We're going to go all the way to the very back, to that gentleman in the, is that a kind of a greenish turquoise? Yeah, you. Would you stand up just where you're at? Yeah, just, yeah, you. That would be you. Yeah, nobody behind you. Just raise one of your hands and show everybody that it's empty. Now close it real tight. Here's the first trick I learned as a nine-year-old boy to impress my dad. I'm going to cause this silver dollar to leave your hand, travel across your all's heads, and land in your hand back there. It's an amazing trick. Blew me away as a nine-year-old boy. Now don't open your hand until I tell you. Sir, don't open your hand until I tell you. That's very important. Here we go. On three. One, two, three. Just like that. Now, the coin is now in his hand, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to put it back. <laughs> One, two, three, open your hand. Go on, open your hand. There it is. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Woo. My dad looked at me and went, that sucked. <laughs> like, wow, dad, that's harsh. He goes, no, that was bad. I'm like, but dad, it happened in my mind. He goes, that's the problem. It happened in your mind. It didn't happen in our mind. He said, if you're going to learn how to do this, you've got to learn how to do it better than that. It's got to happen in our minds too, along with you. And so I got to thinking, I went to the library, I checked out books, and I read about all this, and I thought there was something missing. It was the aha moment. Let me show you what I mean by the aha moment. It's very important that I had to learn the aha moment. What's your name? Kathleen, would you come up and help me? Give Kathleen a round of applause. Come on, Kathleen. Got my hand. Here we go. Kathleen and I are going to show you how I had to learn the aha moment. So Kathleen, if you'll just stand right there, they're going to do two, we're going to use two items that we had lots of on the farm. And that is, we had a well for our water, so we had lots of water, and we had tons of coffee cups because my dad drank coffee from the moment he woke to the moment he went to bed. There were coffee cups everywhere. Pick up, tractor, combine, everywhere. Now, as you can see, they're empty. So here's what I want you to do. Hold on to that one. This is actually going to be yours, and I'm going to put a lot of water in this one because this one's yours. So we're going to fill it all the way up, not to the brim, but almost. Mm. 
Here's what I want you to do. You're going to hold on to this cup of water, and in the bottom, just like that, you're going to hold it up out like that. Okay, that's very important. Don't squeeze it, but just hold it. And you feel the water? Great. Now, this is my cup, so I'm just going to put a little water in it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to test your ability to do several things at once, all right? So what I want you to do is to step forward, watch these cords, don't trip over them. You're going to count out five steps. In fact, kind of go that way, all right? Are you ready? I'll go this way. One, two, three, out loud, go. Oh, great. Turn around. Come back. You did fa fabulous. Now, hold it up high. You didn't spill any. That's great. Now, we got to do the aha moment, okay? Hold it up high. Hold it in one hand. Probably hold it in your left hand. That's right, okay? <laughs> now, take your right hand. Come. Give me a magic word. Create a, just, just be very creative and give me a magic word. Abracadabra. Oh, that's creative. <laughs> But we'll use it, all right? So take your right hand, wave it over. No, let me go first, okay? Let me do I'm going to use my first. Abracadabra. Now I'm going to imagine. We're going to use our imagination. Imagine the water just vanishing up out of there. That's what I'm doing, okay? And there, now watch this. I trust that it worked. So much so, watch this. <gasps> wow, it's gone. <laughs> now it's your turn. <laughs> so you got to believe. You got to believe, all right? You got to use your imagination, all right? So hold it up over your head. Yeah. Now take your hand and wave it over there and go abracadabra. Abracadabra. Now just imagine, imagine, <laughs> Kathleen. Just imagine the water leaving the cup and just vanishing into thin air. All right? Just imagine that. And then just take it and just over your head go, ta-da! <laughs> she doesn't believe it, but look. Ah! Look at that! It works! That's a great, yeah, you're going to throw it on me, weren't you? Now that we know she has an imagination, let's test it one more time, because I know you've got a great imagination. Hold that up and show everybody what it is. What is that? Purse. Yeah, and what's missing? The coin. That's right, so you've got to use your imagination as to how big and long or small it is. It's up to you. So open it up, reach down in there with two fingers, grab what's in there, hold it up high. Yeah, show everybody. What is it? Tell everybody. All the money, the women say money. Why is that? All right, but that's not. That's that's, what we put in purse. I know, but see, I'm a magician, so it's actually a deck of cards. You're holding oh, a deck of cards, okay. so just take them and shuffle them. Yeah, just take them and shuffle them. Now I'm impressed because they're still in the box. <laughs> You're good. Take them out of the box. Okay. Put the box on our imaginary table. No, right here, right here, right here. Oh. Our imaginary table, right here. There you go. <laughs> now take the cards and spread them face down. Just go. Face down. Now, we don't need the jokers. Take out the two jokers. Joker number one, joker number two, throw them away. Now, I'm still impressed because they're face down. You're good. I'm not that good. So I'm going to turn them face up just like that. I'm going to take out the ace of hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. Now, the reason we got rid of all those cards, if you ask somebody to name a card, guess 99% of the time, guess what they'll choose? A joker or an ace. So we've eliminated that. But all the other cards are there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King are all there, okay? Now, I'm going to make this simple, Kathleen. I'm going to put all the hearts and diamonds in one pile, all the clubs and spades. Now, your imagination, I'm kind of expanding it, right? Because you're like, oh, but you got this, right? Okay. We're down to two, two <laughs> piles, right? All the red cards, all the black cards, okay? Mm -hmm. We got rid of the aces and the jokers, but everything else is there, okay? Now, we need to elect a pile, select one, and we need to get rid of one. Say a color, red or black. Red. Take those. Oh, take the red ones. Oh. You chose those. The black ones, you'll just throw them over there, all right? Now, we've narrowed it all down to all the red cards, the hearts and diamonds. Shuffle them up. Wonderful. Hand them to me. Oh, you've got a great imagination. Do you see them? <laughs> yes, she does. Now, get one. Wonderful. Now, we've, we have eliminated all the cards down to one card that you're holding up. Hold it. Show everybody. There it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, look at it. Let me think. Okay, tell everybody what it is. Out loud. Ten of hearts. That's correct. <laughs> My dad wasn't impressed. <laughs> now, why'd you say the ten of hearts? I don't know. That just came to mind? Mm -hmm. That's interesting, all right? Here's what I want you to do. Take your ten of hearts and fold it in half. Fold it in half one more time. Now, open this up and place it down in there. Yeah, just place it down in there, yeah, perfect, just like that. Now close it. Now I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be very interesting. Everything that's in the purse is invisible. But whenever our imagination hits reality, okay, when it hits reality, this is when it goes, what? Look at this. It got deathly quiet in 
get her. <laughs> Everybody's going, do 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 do. It says, get it, it gets, it gets weird, all right? Okay. All right, now watch this. Just now. Just now. Okay. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> now, wouldn't you be amazed? Would you be amazed? Would you be amazed if I opened this card up? And it has changed <laughs> into the four diamonds. Would you be impressed? You wouldn't be impressed, but would you be impressed if it was a ten of hearts? Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. High five. Give it a round of applause. Woohoo! Wow. My dad liked it. He said, how'd you do that? I said, very well. <laughs> he said, no. He said, you need to teach me a trick. I said, Dad, I'll teach you a trick. I'll teach you a really good trick. And my dad loved to learn magic tricks, but he didn't really... I mean, he did, but he didn't. Sir. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jerry, Gerald, right, Gerald? How long have you been farming? All my life. Then you know, then you, this is great. Will you be my dad just for the next few minutes? Sure. Great. I need some money. <laughs> Sorry, son, you're out of luck. No, come on, Dad. Get your wallet out. Come on, Dad. A lifetime of farming, you got to be rich. Hey, Doc, can I borrow a dollar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Down. No, no, no. The large ones. No, no, no. The large ones. Get the large ones. The two large ones. Get those two large ones. The two large ones. There you go. Large one. Now, one more. No, no, no. One more. One more. One more. Come on. One more. One more. Man, farming has been good to you. I love this. I love this. All right. This is great. All right. This is like jackpot. Jackpot. Hey, I now, see those tomorrow. So. Yeah. <laughs> Now, all right, here's this cool thing, all right? This is, this is how I taught my dad a trick. I said, now, Dad, first of all, I learned that every bill has a heads and tails because every bill has a heads on it, all right? Now, this is a really good little bet. If you want to win somebody's $100 bill, get their $100 bill and bet them that they can't tell you what president's on a $100 bill. Do you know what president's on a $100 bill? Not anymore. <laughs> Does anybody? There is no, no, there is. That's right. Franklin was never president. That's how you can win their hundred dollars. That's right. So here we go. There's heads and there's tails. All right. So there's always a building on the back side. Okay. You got that, Dad? All right. So heads. That's very important. You got to remember that. All right. Hold your hands out flat like this. This is the trick I taught my dad. I would put them in his hands just like this, and then I would just play with them a little bit. I'd go like this. I'd just go back and forth, and I'd say, "Now, what do you see, Dad's heads or tails? What do you see? What do you see?" Heads and you see both, yeah, one of each, all right? Now, whoops, now what do you see? If I go back and forth, now what do you see? Heads. Two heads are better than one, yeah. is that right? Yeah. <laughs> He's not impressed. <laughs> he does not care. <laughs> hold him out, hold your hands out, there you go. This is heads, this is tails, right? This is 100, this is 100. Did you give me this one or this one? Which one? This one or this one? I give you both of them. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, I love my job. That's how my dad learned. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep these for a while because this is going to just, this is going to guarantee you don't leave. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My mom came to me one day and she said, son, can you do something with this little bag? And I thought, what, can, what do you mean? She said, well, I made this little silk bag, but I don't need it anymore. Can you do something with this? And I, I looked at it, and I thought, yes, I can do something with this. What's your name, ma'am? Come on, Megan. Give Megan a round of applause. Grab your arm. Let's come up here, Megan. All right. Megan and I are going to show you how you can take stuff around the house and actually do a, a fun illusion with it or use your imagination. All right, little black bag. All right, reach in there and grab what's in there. We had lots of those on the farm because we had those. An egg. That's right. All right. Now, is there anything else in there? Nothing else in there. Hold the egg up. Show everybody the egg. What we're going to do is the vanishing egg trick. All right, so drop it in there. Now, you see it down in there? Mm -hmm. It's resting in there. All right, you feel it right there? Mm -hmm. All right, now watch it vanish, okay? Are you ready? In three, two, one. Look at that. Don't look at my hand. Look at the back. It's all right here. Not right here, but right here. Everybody thinks it's in my hand, but watch. Whoosh. It's gone. Watch this. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Reach in there. Pull the inside out. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. That's sound effects for them in the back. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Reach in there, pull the inside out, Megan. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Reach in there. Fill an egg? No. No egg. Whoosh. It works. Now comes the imaginary part. Okay, Megan, look up here. Do you see the eggs floating? Sure. <laughs> 
You have arrived, lady. You have arrived. I've been seeing them for years, but most people don't see them. I'm going to grab and grab one, okay? Now watch. I'm going to take this imaginary egg. I'm just going to pop it up in there just like that, catch it in the bag, reach in there with my empty hand. And ladies and gentlemen, egg. Ta-da! <laughs> now, I tend to go too fast, so we're going to slow it down in slow motion. So grab that, drop it down in there. I'm going to, you see it in there? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to vanish it in slow motion. You're going to bring it back into regular motion. All right, do you see it right there? Watch closely in three, two, one. Whew. <laughs> wow, it's gone. Whew. <laughs> Pull the inside out. Whoosh. 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 Okay, I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. I am back. All right. We vanished that egg. Reach in there, Megan. You're doing a fabulous job, by the way. Pull it inside out. The egg has vanished. Reach down in there, feel all around. Any egg? All right, here's what I want you to do. Replace my fingers with your fingers, all right? Just like that. Stand right there. Now grab it with your left hand. Let go with your right hand. Hold that up high. You remember the eggs right over here floating? Right over here? Mm -hmm. Grab one. Wonderful. It's an egg. Be careful. It's a little delicate egg, all right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to throw the egg up on three, two. <laughs> Get another egg. <laughs> Great. Hold it right there. Hold the bag up. On three, two, one, you're going to throw the egg up, catch it in the bag, and then create a wonderful, amazing finale. Are you ready? Three, two, one, throw the egg up, catch it in the bag, reach in there with your empty hand, and there's the egg! Take a bow, Megan! Give her a round of applause. Good job. You can go have a seat. Good job. Wow! Now, Dad, that was worth $200, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much, Dad. You're such a sweet man, sweet, sweet man. I appreciate that very much. I love to see and hear you laugh. This is what I feel like I'm called to do now is to help folks to laugh a little bit because my dad taught me and I've learned and I've studied it through the medical field as well that laughter really does bring the stress down. I'll show you why. Here's why it's important to reduce stress because when you get stressed, and I mean we all have a little stress, but when you get a lot of stress, what it does is it depletes your body of the energy that it needs to attack diseases and sickness. That's why it's easy to get sick. That's why 77% of us feel this physical or this uh, stress in our bodies, the physical part of it. How do we feel it? We feel it through these things, headaches, high blood pressure, heart problems, all these things. Now, these can be related to something else, and I always tell people, if you feel anything like this, go to your doctor and see what's going on. But there are some people, like for instance, the guy that takes me to the airport when I'm traveling, he, I was telling him what I do, and he was telling me about a job he was in, a very high stress job that he was in. He said one night he was laying in his bed, and all of a sudden his heart just felt like it was going to explode out of his body, and his left arm goes numb. He thought he was having a heart attack. He was only, he's only at that time 28 years old. They get him to the emergency room, they go through the EKG, they look at his body, not a thing wrong with him. And then he proceeds to tell his doctor about his job. And the doctor says, you, young man, are going through a stress attack. You're having an anxiety attack and stress. So this is what can happen. Stress can come through and reveal itself in our bodies through this. Now, there are three causes. Number one cause. There's a lot of causes of stress, but here are the three top ones, okay? The first one is what we do all the time, and that is work. And don't think that in your agricultural business that you're going to be exempt of stress because they found out that farming and ranching is one of the 12 top high-risk occupations of stress there is out there. Not only that, they found out that farm and ranch owners were second only to laborers. Number two, when it came to uh, related, death-related things to stress, okay? So <laughs> when I talk to my corporate groups and they're like, oh, I'm so stressed, I'm going to go buy a farm, <laughs> I'm like, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Much stress there as there is anywhere else. The number two reason or number cause is our family. Now, this is just normal, everyday family stuff. I love my kids, but man, they can steal the joy, can't they? <laughs> in fact, I got a call when, I was, uh, when my son was in junior high, and he said, Mr. Phillips, principal said, Mr. Phillips, your son, Taylor, challenged, he was challenged to put his head through the hole in the lunchroom chair, in the back of the lunchroom. Good news is he made it. <laughs> The bad news is we're sawing it off his head right now. Get up here and get him. <laughs> I love these kids. This little girl got her markers for her birthday, and the next day she's like, Hey, Mom and Dad, look 
what I drew on baby's sister. Look at that. These kids, that dog's looking at them like, you idiot, get some paper. I mean, look at this. Oh, my gosh. And this guy, I don't know if you saw this guy in the news, but it was, a, it was a couple of years ago. He was visiting South Korea. He's from China. And his family, his kids, and, and they were in the airport in China. And his little boy gets a hold of the passport and does that to it. They won't let him go home. He has to stay in China until his, his family gets home. And then they have to mail back credentials so he can get out of China and get back to South Korea. These kids are so stressful. I mean, look at that. They know how to handle stress. Look at that. <laughs> if you don't think kids are stressful, look at that dog. If you don't think that dog is stressful, this dog is really stressed. I'm just saying. <laughs> if he's not, he better be. <laughs> That's the second cause. The third cause is what my dad found out. Money. <laughs> The loss of money especially, right, Dad? That's right. Losing money can be so. Listen, I've talked to people who have tons of money. I've talked to people who have no money and everybody in between. It doesn't matter how much, how little. Money is just stressful. So those are the top three causes, okay, are work, family, and money. And in the ag business, this is where it gets stressful because we're trying to juggle all of these. And then that's where the stress creeps in. And, and it's just something to be aware of. This is why I do this, just to be aware of this stuff that's going on. On top of that, now most of the world has the regular stress. As agricultural people, we have uh, other stress things that they don't have to worry about. We have to worry about weather, like today. Or when you've got the crop in the, in the field and then comes all this rain and destroys the crop. Uh, or, <laughs> love that. But in the agriculture business, there's something, something known as unexpected stresses, and I hate those unexpected stresses. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. You never know what's going to happen on the farm. <laughs> and I hate unexpected stresses. But in the agricultural business, it happens a lot. It does. It happens a lot. <laughs> this is what you look like with some stress. This is what you look like with a lot of stress. And this is just way too much stress. <laughs> and this is what I hope you look like, all right? This is what you're supposed to look like. Here's the top three signs to ask yourself, am I too stressed, okay? Now listen, you're going to have some stress. If you have no stress, that's bad because you're dead. <laughs> you're going to have some stress. No, no, don't let anyone ever tell you you're going to, you can have a stress-free life. That's a lie. You're going to have some stress because the doctors tell us a little bit of stress keeps your body functioning well and keeps you doing your job well and at peak. This is what happens when you get overstressed. Here are some signs. One is apathy. You don't care anymore. Now, in the agricultural business, they did a study of farmers who went through depression and uh, apathy, and they found out that probably the number one thing that they saw was they didn't care about the farm anymore. They didn't care about what it looked like. They didn't care about the machinery. They just let it all kind of go deteriorate. And that's a sign. That's a sign to pay attention to. Another one is anger. Nothing wrong with anger. It's an emotion. We all have it. But when you're highly stressed or too much stress, the little things in life, okay, they stress you and you just jump like that. You turn like a rattlesnake bite, okay? You just jump at people like that. Or you get so angry your arm grows three meters. <laughs> but seriously, though, when you're highly stressed, angry, you, just, you get angry over the littlest things that, that shouldn't anger you, okay? The third sign that you're extremely stressed is fatigue. You're just tired all the time. You're tired in places you're not supposed to be tired. Now, if you're falling asleep on the toilet, <laughs> you better go to the doctor because you may be way overtired, OK? But those are three signs right there, OK? I make light of that because I want you to understand this is a serious thing, but I want you to understand it's something that you can correct. That's what I love about this is you can correct it, all right? So we're going to do a little stress test right quick because I want you guys to make sure you leave stress-free. I don't want anybody to be full of stress, okay? Because that's very, very important. Very, very important. Dad, you're so stressed. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Dad. He's stressed over that 200 over that $200 he lost. He's so stressed. Come on here. If you've been farming all your life, Dad, then you know, here, you know how stressful farming can be, right? So how many years has that been? Just an, a guesstimate. 50 years? 40 years? 30 years? Thank you. How many? All my life? So, yeah. So, 
So you wonder how old I am? No, 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 no I'm just saying, just a, a uh, round them out. I'm about just 40 curious. years. About 40 yeah. years. Okay, okay. So there's a lot of stress built up. Oh, my gosh. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to relieve some of that stress, okay? But I'm going to empty your pocket. I'm not going to empty your pocket. You're yeah. going to empty this, not this pocket, empty this pocket. I'll tell you what else is stressing you out. This okay. is an added stress, the telephone. Oh, my gosh. Anything else? That's it? Anything? Oh, bad breath. That's very stressful, all right? Reach in there and pull out everything there. And I'll tell you what else stressing you, Dad. Okay. Oh, the oh, Dad. Hey, what hey. in the world is that? <gasps> Dad, you're stressed. Yeah. You're way too stressed. <laughs> Trying to get rid of it. I started to say, this is your way of getting rid of it. That's a, you know, when you get rid of stress, there's healthy ways and non-healthy ways, okay? This is your healthy way. <laughs> when you get stressed, you just put some on and go, oh, I'm so much better. <laughs> That's okay to each his own. I don't judge, all right? As long as you're bringing the stress down, okay? Everybody's wondering what your color is. Hot fudge. No. You little animal, you. <laughs> It's bright red. Yeah, really, you're hot fudge, you little animal. Well, listen, I'm going to take the stress out so you don't have to use that anymore, okay? okay. And the way I'm going to do that is with some stress-free handkerchiefs from here in the United States of America, made right here. We're going to shake them out. What I'm going to do, Dad, is tie them together, and then we're going to pass them through your body. Let me rephrase that, Dad. <laughs> we're going to magically pass them through his body. <laughs> We don't have time for the other. All right, so here's what we're going to do, all right? We're just going to put them down the front of your shirt, just like that. No worries. Stand forward just like this. Okay, stand back here just like this. There you go, just like that, all right? Now, what's in this pocket right here, okay? We, your, your wallet. Your hands. Are my hands, are, but your wallet, okay? We don't need that. What's over in this one? Your, 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 phone. your phone, okay? Yeah. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. Let's put the phone here, and let's, anything in the back's here. Anything back here? Hanky. Your hanky? Anything in this back one? No. And anything that's going to hurt you? Any, you got a belt on? Yeah. Okay, if I re undo the belt, will your pants fall? Uh, I wouldn't try it. <laughs> That's enough for me, all right? I'm not going to do it, all right? Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take these and we're going to pull them through your body. They're going to come out the back and all the stress that's in your 40 years of farming is going to attach itself and you're going to walk away with less stress, okay? Are you ready? Here we go. On three, two, one. Whoa, Dad, you're so, you need to do what my dad taught me. <laughs> Eat a brand muffin. Let it go. Here we go, on three, two, one, be free, Dad, be free, be free, be f what is that? What is it caught on? What in the world? You weren't supposed to tell them about that. You might want to get out of farming, Dad. It's really turning you into something strange. That's a little too big. I know, that's why you're stressed. Give me a round of applause. Good job, Dad. All right, you have a seat. Now, Dad, I want to make you something because you were such a, go ahead and have a seat, Dad, but you were such a good sport and you've been a great sport this whole time. I want to make you something here, okay? Here's what I want to make you. What's your favorite color? You got my wallet. <laughs> You're so stressed, Dad. Are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. What's your favorite color? Right now. Yellow, great, all right. Have a, I'll get a hand, have a seat, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> calm down, Dad, calm down, all right. I'm going to make you a balloon animal so you can take this. I'm going to show you how it can reduce stress, okay? Now, I couldn't blow these up as a kid because I was, uh, I just, I never have, even to this day. So the very first balloon animal I made was a pregnant worm. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> My dad wasn't impressed, so we went to a five and dime store called Gibson's, and he bought me one of these, and it solved problem number one, but it created problem number two, and that is, it solved problem number one, I could blow them up, but number two is I was always taught that you, you put too much pressure on a balloon, they'll, they'll pop, so I could never get myself, because of that sound, to twist it. So the second balloon animal, Dad, was a snake with a really long tongue. Look at that. <laughs> and here's what I'd do, my dad would come in, and he'd, he'd be really, really tired. He'd fall asleep in his chair real early, like at 7 o'clock at night. I'd go get one of these. I'd blow it up. I'd sneak behind his chair and do this.
I'm just kidding, it's in my mouth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> throw that away. Okay, I killed that one, Dad. <laughs> What's your favorite color, Dad? At this point, you don't care, do you? <laughs> Orange! Oh, I'm going to do this right because there's nothing in the bag, and you've been such a good sport. I don't want you to go home with nothing. <laughs> I'm going to make you a balloon animal that's worth at least $200. <laughs> oh, here's the cool thing. I'm going to make you something else. Here's what the cool thing is. When you get stressed, you're no longer going to have to reach for this lipstick anymore. All you have to reach for is this little balloon animal. Keep it in the pickup or somewhere handy so that when you feel all that stress coming on, you don't reach for that, you reach for this little balloon animal. Because this little balloon animal, anything healthy can bring your stress down. I'll show you six ways in just a moment that you can bring your stress down, okay? But this little dog, you bring stress down. When you get stressed, Dad, you take this dog out and look at it. If it's talking, you get to the hospital. Because <laughs> you're way past stress, okay? But if it's not talking, you just look at it and then just, just play, just have fun with it. It does tricks, but help it out, okay? Look at this. Tell it to sit up. Look at that. It sits up. Look at that. Tell it to roll over. See, it rolls over. Tell it to play dead. Oh. Doggone. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dad. <laughs> oh, well, here's your doggy bag. All right, I'm going to get back to that in a minute because I don't want you to leave with that, okay? I'll get back to that in a minute. In fact, I don't want anybody to leave like that. I'm going to give you some healthy ways, okay? you got to find healthy ways to reduce stress. Here are six ways, okay? One is listening to music. You thought that just listening to music was something to do to pass the time of day. It's actually been proven to bring stress down. Another one is exercise and walking. Reading, this is what I love about First Farmers doing this. They're actually educating you to do your job better, to do farming better. That will bring the stress down to do it better, okay? I love that. Here's another one, prayer and meditation. And if you're really stressed, prayer and medication. <laughs> Vacation, I understand I'm talking to ag people. My, I think in our lifetime, my, my 18 years on the farm, we probably took less than five. I think we took three in those 18 years because nobody was going to do the farming for us, okay? And I understand that, but if you can take some time, just like today, to get away every now and then, even if it's just for a day, they say it'll bring your stress down, and I believe that. And then there's laughter. A lot of people don't believe this and have not known this, but laughter has been proven medically to do some amazing things to your body. One of them is it relaxes your body and will literally bring the stress down. Another thing it will do is it release endorphins. In other words, it makes you feel good. Also, it blocks pain. So much so that Center, Cancer Centers of America, they have cancer uh, therapy in their uh, chemotherapy and they'll have people laughing because here's what they found out when they're laughing they'll block some of the pain but they also heal faster when they're laughing because here's what it does laughter boosts your immunity now these are these are wonderful cells that that multiply in your body this gamma interferon gamma interferon and T cells and B cells these cells kill cancer cells sickness diseases these are the good things you want in your body and they're always going off in your body but here's what they found out when you laugh they multiply faster. And I think that's an awesome thing because it's just an amazing thing. Now here's something else they found out. They took some heart attack survivors. All they did in this study was give them 30 minutes of laughter a day. After the study they were less likely to have a second heart attack. Their, their medication went down and their blood pressure went down. All from 30 minutes of laughter a day for this study. And I think that's an amazing for that to happen. The Bible has said it all along in Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like medicine. It really will heal your, heal your body. And guess what? It's free. It's free. It's something that you can do anytime, anywhere. You just have to look for it. It's everywhere. In fact, I went to Walmart. And this just made me laugh because I thought it's ironic, but it's funny. And then I saw this sign, babies and children, buy two, get three free. And this one, one day sale, Friday and Saturday. That's a long day. But if you pay attention, these things are everywhere. I love this one. This year, thousands of men will die from stubbornness. And somebody wrote in there, no, we won't. That's funny. I love this drive through the all-you-can-eat buffet drive through That's going to be interesting right there. And then I love Pizza Hut. I'm glad they put this on their sign. We have pizza. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> I just have a strange sense of humor. I went by this Target. It's like, sup, Target? <laughs> this is me. <laughs> 
And then this one, I love this one. Psychic fair canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. Don't you think they'd have known that? <laughs> you don't have to give them a sign. They're psychic. They'll figure it out. And if you get really stressed, you probably want to go to this restaurant where the soup of the day is tequila. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, somebody uh, told me one time that they, they, they corrected, or they wrote a word, autocorrect, did the wrong word, and they sent it before they could correct it. This guy, he hates autocorrect too. He put a sign up that says, autocorrect has become my worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is a funeral home uh, chain up in upstate New York. Why you would name it, am I gone? <laughs> And then this guy, septic tanks pumped, swimming pools filled. Not the same truck. <laughs> Glad he added that third line, otherwise he's going out of business. <laughs> and then this father and son had fun with their septic tank service. Underneath the phone number they wrote, we haul milk on the weekends. <laughs> I think I went out. I love it, I love it. I think my microphone went out. Test it, yeah, all right. So here's some wine here, a wine rack, and over the wine was the word water. <laughs> it's like, good Lord, he did it again. Look at that. <laughs> and I love this one. This is, this will be, I don't know whose church this is, but I can tell you right now, it ain't Peter's church. <laughs> some of you are still thinking on that one, aren't you? Yeah. I love Catholics because they have such a great sense of humor. Lynn is coming. Get your ash in church. <laughs> I love that. That'll make you laugh right there going down the road. If you're going to buy a Bible, I suggest you buy this one because it's a signed copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then in business, we always want to know where does our customers find out about us. So they always do a survey. And so do the YMCA. How did you hear about the YMCA? And they checked other. Village people. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And my wife and I, we married 31 years this June, and she can find a heck of a bargain. She found this shirt for $39.94. It was $39.95. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which is better than this one. It was $29.99. Now it's $89.99. Going the other way. And this one, I, we have a Walgreens by our house, and I shop in there all the time, but sometimes I want to ask him, why do you market this way? Uh, early pregnancy test, $22.99, nothing wrong with that price, but why would you put it on a good deal for school rack? <laughs> that says, go back happy. <laughs> and then this one was in the middle of an aisle, it had a signed blowout specials in a basket, it had x lax I mean, this stuff will make you laugh. I love it. This Walgreens had outside their sign, we have all your back-to-school supply needs. 12-pack of Miller beer. Because it's going to be a tough season. <laughs> I don't know where that one's at, but hang on there. <laughs> Could be there. <laughs> but it, either way, that's an, another extreme. 196, minus degrees. Mm. I went to a restaurant one time. My wife and I, we were going to eat. And I walked into the restroom to wash my hands, and I couldn't because the towel dispenser was broke. <laughs> That's worse than broken, people. And if you're going to open up a bakery, I suggest you learn how to spell. Happy bath day. Congratulations on your weeding. And let me just say, if you hire this person, good luck. You get what you pay for. <laughs> and I don't care how good these are, and I don't care how cheap they are, I am not going to eat jalapenos chicken poopers. <laughs> Ain't happening. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> and I love this guy. He wants to get rid of, he puts his sign up, needs some drip. A guy drove by and wrote, what is drip? Third guy drove by, where is your punctuation? <laughs> and an entrepreneur drove by and said, need signs, drip cheap, spelling free. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
I'm telling you, laughter is everywhere. You just open your eyes and look at it. I went to Lowe's to buy a new doorbell for a house that went out. It's a wireless doorbell. I get home, and I'm cutting it open. I start laughing. My wife's like, why are you laughing? I said, honey, evidently in America, we don't know when somebody presses our doorbell what those two melodies are, so they have to put them on there. Ding dong and ding. <laughs> there it is right there. And then I was in Lowe or in uh, Home Depot, and I just thought this is funny. Underneath the toilet was a sign that says, "Ask associate for a demonstration." <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> now, ladies, there's a few ladies in the room. When you try, I travel a lot. If you travel and you have a neck pillow that's beige or tan, don't attach it to your purse and walk through the airport like that. <laughs> you will get a lot of attention you don't want. <laughs> And if you go to Walt Disney World and you buy this uh, wonderful Mickey Mouse sweatshirt, I suggest you don't wear it like this. <laughs> now, Dad, you feel stressed, but Mickey's much more stressed than you. Just think of Mickey when you're really stressed, all right? Now, this is John and Maria. They're a wonderful farm family. They're, you know, they passed away. But they had to have a great sense of humor, especially Maria. And I really applaud those of you ladies that are, are, are farmer's wives. But Maria had to have a very special wife because not only was she a farmer's wife, but she was known as Mrs. Dumbfart. <laughs> All of her life. You know they had to have fun with that. Be out on the farm and John does something stupid and she goes, you're just a dumb fart. Yes, I am, and so are you. And this guy has a great sense of humor. He's up in Canada. He owns an electric uh, plumbing business. And all he does, he really just makes people smile. He drives around town. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Isn't that great? I love that. Just a great sense of humor. Listen, I, I, I appreciate so much First Farmers allowing me to come yesterday and today to do this. Because really my goal is two things. One is to put a smile on your face. And I hope I've done that a little bit, okay? little bit of a smile but the second thing is to take you from that if you're feeling high stress to bring you back down to that because the real reason is I want you to live longer that's really the reason why I do this because stress can take you out too early and it's something this is what bothers me it's something that you and I can do about it okay we just have to do something about it so it's just kind of a fun reminder to laugh a little bit but also if you feel like you're at a high stress bring that stress level down somehow some way use the six ways I gave you or just find something healthy Bring the stress down because I want you to live long and I want you to be prosperous in what you do. And I appreciate what you do. And, uh, Dad, <laughs> you're still here. All right. Well, I want to fix something for you, okay? I, wanna, I, I don't want you to go home with this, okay? And I don't want anybody to go home like this. I don't want stress to do this to you. So if you find ways to reduce stress, I promise you, okay, if you find ways to do this, this is what will happen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look at this, Dad. This is just for you. You're going to love this. Look at this. Just for you. Look at this. Thank you. My wife is one of them. There's your lovely wallet bag. And is it, what, isn't that dog worth $200? No. No. All right. There you go, Dad. Give him a round of applause. Thank you all very much, Dad. <laughs>